to slow living in this video I'm going to take you through how to make some really simple friendship bracelets this could be a fun activity to do with kids I think it's suitable for primary age kids uh, but of course kids of all ages can sort of take part in this too um, we're gonna try and use up some of the bits and bobs you might have lying around the house instead of purchasing new materials which currently for me is a bit of a game changer because I'm in Melbourne where we're in stage 4 lockdown and we really can't just go to the shops and buy all the things that we wish we could or it's very inconvenient or could be expensive to do so so instead I'm going to show you how to make some of your own t-shirt yarn um, as well as we could just pick up some of this um, everyday cotton string that you could get from the supermarket or that you might have lying around I'm going to do a few more videos of how to entertain the kids with some you know everyday crafty type items or projects so uh, do tune in to the series if you're interested and enjoy for this project, we will need some of this t-shirt yarn, which I'll show you how to make. We could use household string, like I said, or I also found this leftover cross stitch um, thread, which would also be really cute. Uh, some masking tape and some scissors. So first things first, we're gonna make that t-shirt yarn. If you don't have anything, um, you can use an old t-shirt, you can use some remnant fabric. I've done this before in previous visit bleh, videos. So check those out if this little um, clip isn't that clear, I'll link it below. Um, basically you cut strips of your old t-shirt or your remnant. It must be a stretch jersey, so like a t-shirt material, so that you can pull it out like this. Basically cut it into inch wide strips, pull it out and voila, you will have t-shirt yarn. Um, I'm going to use some that I had left over from a previous project where I made a wall hanging. You can also check out that video in this same playlist. Basically I'm going to tie uh, three pieces of that yarn together with a simple knot um, and then tape it to the table. I actually didn't leave much room at the top so I'd recommend leaving a little bit more room at the top. Um, and that'll help you to finish the bracelet later on. In this style of bracelet, I'm basically going to do a very simple plait. Um, and as you can see, you just, I assume most people can do plaits, but if not, you're pretending that the outer pieces of yarn take turns to fight their way into the middle. Uh, that's how I taught myself anyway. <laughs> um, so do that all the way to the bottom. Again, leave some room to tie that knot. To finish off this bracelet, I tied a crap load of knots together like this. Didn't end up looking very good, but if you have primary aged kids, this is a good way to get them to finish it themselves. Um, I'm a big fan of allowing kids a bit of creativity to problem solve. Um, so just allow your child to figure things out for themselves and they might come up with their own solutions. Once you're done tying all those knots, you can just trim off the ends. Be careful not to trim them too short, otherwise your knots might come undone. In hindsight, I probably should have measured how long I made this bracelet because it's a bit big for my wrist. Um, but in this next bracelet I'm going to do, which is basically the same technique, I'm going to attempt a adjustable, um, adjustable knot. So here we go with a different kind of string. I'm going to repeat the exact same uh, technique as before, leaving a little bit more room at the top. And I wish I had left a little bit more room at the bottom, I think, um, because that will give us more space to work with when we do this adjustable knot. Okay, so here is our mostly finished bracelet. Now we're going to tie um, the three pieces of thread together at both ends. Um, as you can see, we're going to cut off a little bit of extra string. That's what we're going to use to make this little adjustable knot. And this is the bit where it gets tricky to explain. So <laughs> try to follow my visual. Basically, you want to try and create this little loop. One side is going to be shorter than the other. And then you place that with the two ends of your bracelet overlapping like so. Place them all together. Now grab the long bit of the loop that you just put with your bracelet and loop it around the two ends that you're going to essentially join together. Now you want to loop this nice and loosely. Um, we want to go around about five times because 
to finish the loop, we're going to send the end of this thread back through the loops that you just created. Sounds tricky, is a little bit fiddly because you kind of need more hands to do it. Um, so I would recommend this maybe for secondary uh, aged kids or adults. But basically just give it a try a few times. Um, here you'll see I'm sending it back through the loops that I just made. Take your time with it. Try and keep the loops nice and neat because that'll, make the, that'll mean that your knot turns out nice and neat too. Now, as you can see, I just threaded that thread through the other little loop that's on the left because that's what's going to hold this knot together. Now pull on both sides of that extra bit of string and slowly you will see the knot start to come alive. And there we have it. We've done a little adjustable knot. So now with those long bits, we're just going to finish them off by tying a little knot. As you can see, you want to tie the knot as close to the big knot as possible. So make sure you push it all the way in like so. That'll stop the big knot from coming undone. And then you basically do the same to the other side and trim off those long bits because you no longer need them. And then your bracelet will be adjustable. Okay, so for this last bracelet, I'm going to do the exact same technique, but I'm going to make an adjustable knot using the bracelet itself, not an extra piece of string. So it is the same technique as the previous knot but you're just using the ends of the bracelet to create the knot instead of the separate piece of string. So again, creating that loop on the left and then using the right to sort of create those three stripes. I think that's what I'm trying to show you here. Um, so placing that middle stripe using the right um, part of the bracelet. Now we're actually going to use that bottom string to loop around the other two. So it takes a little bit to hold on to everything, which is why I would recommend leaving a little bit more for you to work with on either end of the bracelet. That would make it a lot easier. So as we did for the previous knot, you want to loop it around, ideally about four or five times. I didn't have enough string, so I only did three. And then you're going to pass the strands back through the loops that you just created. This was really tricky because I just didn't leave myself enough string. And then I accidentally um, moved out of the frame. So even though my knot was successful this time around as I pulled those, bi uh, those bits through, you can't see it. So <laughs> after this, I proceeded to undo this knot so that I could show you again how I did it. And that led to about, I don't know, maybe half an hour to 45 minutes of not doing and not undoing because I only managed to get it right that first time. And every time I did it after that turned out horribly. So look, I tried again and again and again, and then eventually I managed to get a really nice looking knot. Now all that's left to do is tie a little knot um, on either end to finish off your bracelet and to make sure that the big adjustable knot doesn't slide off the end. And then cut it to size and you are done. following along in a very simple craft activity. It's really nice to um, keep your hands busy and do some like crafty type things while you're in isolation uh, because it'll help pass the time. It's also very satisfying and can sort of bring out that childlike um, sense of play that we often lose as we get a bit older. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, do share your projects with me or tag me at Slow Living. I would love to see what you have gotten up to. Until next time. 
I'm going to do a few more videos of this type of thing to sort of keep the, the 